Every day is an early day here at GST. We get asked a lot how we do it all with raising a family, caring for our animals, running our conservation project, and working our other jobs. Okay. Well, we just rise with the sun and attack it all together as a family. And coffee. A lot and lots of coffee. <laughs> In this video, we invite you to come along and see how we supplement our animals during the winter with food from your local grocery store. Come on, let's check it out. Something that's all too common in turtle and tortoise keeping is the use of fruits. Now, of course, they're going to love the taste of them because they have sugars in them, but the problem is most tortoise species and turtle species cannot process or handle the sugars that are in them. So things like bananas should be used sparingly, if ever. A better choice is going to be some of your berries, like strawberries, blackberries, and blueberries. Still, those should be used only in moderation. They can be fed a little bit more to species like box turtles, but when we're talking about something like a Russian or Hermes tortoise, for example, this is pretty much a big no-no. Romaine lettuce. Lettuce feeding, another very popular thing. Lettuce is really only high in one thing, which is water. So that's kind of all you're giving your animals when you use it. They do, of course, love it. One good thing about romaine lettuce, it's going to be a little bit higher in certain vitamins than, say, icebergs. So icebergs should really never be fed. Romaine can supplement and be fed sparingly. Some better choices are going to be endive and radicchio. Again, sparingly, and all this stuff needs to make up a diet together, not just be one item fed at all times. So we get that not everybody has the uh, massive collection that we have. We have hundreds of animals and hundreds of meat. So a lot of the times we do order uh, from a wholesaler um, a massive amount of greens all at once so that we can feed everybody all at once. But if you need to come to your local grocery store to feed your, your tortoises or your turtles over the winter, you can grab these prepackaged greens. Things like arugula, which is in the dandelion family. Um, you can get spring mix. Um, Chris had touched on getting romaine lettuce, but it's all here for you at your local grocery store. Fish counter. Going to be expensive, but this can come in handy for a lot of other species like snapping turtles, painted turtles, diamondback terrapins. Fresh seafood is going to be better than frozen, but this is the kind of stuff that you can use to supplement like a, a commercial diet of pellets. Tomatoes are another common offering to a lot of turtles and tortoises, but they shouldn't be fed. They actually come from the same family as something called deadly nightshade. So the leaves and the unripe fruits are actually toxic for these animals. The ripe fruits can be fed, but this is something that should really be fed in moderation. This is not going to do any good for the animals. So one of the biggest challenges that we face in trying to keep these animals appropriately is of course giving them the proper diet. They're wild animals at heart, so they should be eating wild things. Tortoises are not supposed to be eating human-made grocery store produce, but when you put it all together in a well-balanced diet and you basically supplement things, you're okay. It's all about eating in moderation and eating healthy choices. Now we just need some bugs. Let's go. I took a ride out to Petsmart today to grab what we needed for uh, our lizards. Uh, we have lots and lots of crickets. 
uh, some mealworms, some wax worms, some corn worms. Uh, the guy at the store was so nice. They just got a new shipment in and he actually sorted through the whole thing for me and gave me some fresh bugs to feed our, our little guy. So let's go see who takes what. So meet Dwayne, our Godzilla giant leopard gecko. Um, he's gorgeous. He's fat. He's wide. I love him. And I'm really curious to see what he goes for. These guys are so cool. I love working with them. Oh, you're so cute. <laughs> and fat. As it turns out, Dwayne, our giant leopard gecko, was not interested in anything we were offering him, but luckily, one of our other leopard geckos took a hornworm down so you guys can see what that's like. In the meantime, let's go see if any of our other lizards would be interested in these apparently delicious worms. This is a hornworm. This is one of the worms that Casey was talking about. We're gonna try out our Aki monitors, which are the Australian dwarf spiny tail monitors. Uh, they're young, they're only a few months old, so they got a little bit of growing to do, but we're gonna see if they like hornworms. They're used to eating other insects like crickets, mealworms, waxworms, and dubia roaches. We're gonna see if he wants this. These guys are so cool to watch eat. They will wrestle with their food, they'll just violently attack it. They're full-blown insect eaters, and it's just super comical and just awesome to see. We've got three of them in here, and he is gonna do whatever he can, he or she, we don't really know the sex of them yet because they're so young. We're gonna see what this guy or gal does to take this hornworm down. And this is good, this, it's good for them to exert this energy and have to hunt like this. When it comes to tortoises, we don't like to force any supplementation onto them except for giving them like cuddle bone throughout their enclosure. Sometimes we'll give them calcium powder on their food items. Females that have just recently laid eggs or need to lay eggs, the babies occasionally. But again, our tortoises spend the vast majority of their time outdoors where they're getting everything that they really need. So they don't really need anything else forced on them. When it comes to our lizards, they definitely need to be supplemented. What about you? You want this? I don't think you're gonna like the taste of it. Trust me, I've gotten it in my mouth, it's disgusting. This is calcium powder and these are multivitamins which are very important for lizards and other reptiles too. But in this case, we're going to show you how we dust our crickets and other insects with these powders. We do this like every other day for the lizards. Sometimes we'll do multivitamins, sometimes we will do calcium. Today we're gonna to do calcium. It's real easy and the lizards still eat the insects, no problem, and they get that added nutrition that they need. So you saw Casey pick up all these bug boxes today. These are pretty cool because they're designed for the bugs to survive in them for a little bit. But what we really need to do, because you saw how much we just got, we need to start breeding our own insects. Look into that if you have a large collection. You probably already are doing it. Um, so all I'm gonna do is open this box and dump these crickets into this container. Make sure they all get out of there. We're gonna have an escape unit too, of course. Extra things out of here. These are like the hydration that they give them to survive in the box. So now crickets are all in there. I don't know if you guys can see that. Oh, he, he gets the lip. Not you though. Calcium powder. Just dump a little bit of that in there. Just a little. And then you are just going to shake this up. And now all of your crickets are equally covered in the calcium powder and we're gonna go ahead and we're going to watch our Aki monitors go ballistic over these. What's really cool about the monitors, you know, if you know anything about them, they have an extreme level of intelligence and it's not just the big monitor species, even these dwarf ones do too. And, you know, when they take down prey like this, they actually use things in their environment as kind of like tools to help them get the insects safely down their throat. And you've seen him or her using the rock and logs here just to kind of sway that into his mouth exactly how he needs it to fit so that he can effortlessly swallow it. OK, 
Okay, on to some vegetarians now. What you're getting to see are some of our tortoises that are awake for the winter inside our building. Enjoy the greens that we just picked up for them. We brought them out here and put them on the table so that we could get some really nice, crisp, clean shots for you to see how they take these foods. Most of them wasted no time eating. A couple of them were just a little bit more into being curious because they were out of their exhibits. Now there are so many other choices to feed. These are just some easily accessible ones because I'm sure a lot of you can only just simply get to a grocery store during these winter months. The key is that they go back outside and they spend most of their lives outdoors where they can live naturalistically and eat better things for them. Variety is key, I can't say that enough, and we even use a little bit of commercial diet about twice a week in the form of Missouri Tortoise Pellets 5M21 formula. It's pretty calming to watch, I don't know about you guys, that's how I feel, but there's animals in the reptile world that eat a lot different than these vegetarian tortoises. So, vast majority of our snakes are hibernating right now in the nature room as it gets cooler, but we do have a couple of snakes on the other side that are still awake, like this yearling California king snake that belongs to our daughter Cece named Pumpkin. So, viewer discretion advised, snakes eat rodents. We feed frozen thawed, we don't feed live, but we did have to thaw out a little mouse and we're going to see if Pumpkin will take it on camera so you guys can see the art behind how these, how these snakes eat. So Pumpkin is a colubrid. These are famous snakes that are constrictors. And the difference between what you just saw and what would happen in the wild with a live rodent is she kind of just took that from me and started eating it. She knows she doesn't have to do any work, but in the wild, king snakes will take down their prey by constricting them, basically suffocating them, and then they will swallow them whole, typically head first. So the one thing she did do was she grabbed this mouse by the head and she's gonna swallow it whole, so it basically slides down. And it's pretty impressive what king snakes are capable of doing. In the wild, they actually will eat other snakes. That's how they get the name king snake. And they can eat pretty big snakes comparable to their own body size. Um, in captivity, they will basically strictly eat rodents, which is also good for them because they do eat rodents in the wild. And she's a captive bred snake, so she knows she doesn't really have to do any work. And again, this is a frozen thawed rodent, little mouse. If you guys notice right there, Pumpkin is actually rattling her tail. She's essentially doing what a rattlesnake would do to warn you when she is in fact actually harmless, unlike a rattlesnake that is venomous. Pretty cool the adaptations that these snakes uh, evolved to do. I mean, it's awesome. You know, she's pretending she's a rattlesnake basically right now and telling you, hey, leave me alone, you know, and, and she also knows that she, if she were in the wild, she's actually vulnerable right now because she's got a, a, a prey item starting to go down her throat, so it would be hard for her to defend herself in any other way. So essentially, it's just a warning sign. Stay away from me. But king snakes, folks, are completely harmless. Even if they were to bite you, it's a little prick. It's really not a big deal. Um, they're incredible, powerful snakes though, and they are vital to the ecosystem and they benefit us as well because they control these rodent populations and they also control more common snake species. The eastern king snakes that I track here for work are famous for eating water snakes, ribbon snakes, and garter snakes, which are very common species. So like all box turtles, Otis loves earthworms. They're a very important and natural part of his diet, but we're gonna check out these other worms here and see if he'll take those. Again, we don't know much about Otis's past, so we don't know entirely what he's been fed. I love you. I love you. Hornworm pal. Yeah. Oh. If I could just get it to let go of me. Ew. Get it. Yes. Nice. Nice. There you go. <laughs> Do you like it? He likes it. Box turtles are omnivores, so they're eating plant matter and animal matter. And uh, things like earthworms and other invertebrates are a major part of their diet, along with things like mushrooms. They'll take advantage of different berries that fall to the ground. Um, low bush blueberry, high bush blueberry, stuff like that. So there's a little glimpse into what we do here in the winter to get through. You're, Sorry. you're getting weird. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. We all have cabin fever right now. 
Uh, we get a lot of snow, a lot of rain, a lot of clouds. So stuff like this really brightens our day, especially hanging out with Otis like this. Just getting to interact, you know? Yeah, it's super cool. So thank you guys for watching. I'm sure if Otis could thank you, he would. <laughs> Don't forget to subscribe. Click the bell icon for notifications. We have a brand new Otis shirt. Go check out the store that you designed again. Yes, that's right. I totally oh. forgot that I did, but I did. <laughs> we'll see you in the next video.